Kahala Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rapak Radash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect who are in the house of David, be born again. Inshallah, welcome to the 130 Yasha Rala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as the Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the upcoming pagan festival known as Christmas and how it should not be uh, worshipped or followed by anybody who says they follow the Bible. Now, to get started, let's read this scripture. This is Colossians 2 and 8. Beware at least any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after the Messiah. We are coming upon Christmas, and with it, this last Saturday when I was out there with the brothers uh, preaching, I got the first real sense of the Christmas holiday spirit there the streets were packed with people shopping there was gifts in a lot of people's hands everybody was going about uh you know doing their the bid of, of of satan by following these pagan pagan uh rituals man and a lot of these people here have no idea what they're doing a lot of them are simply just buying gifts for their loved ones their friends their acquaintances even some of people they hate but they're doing it because that's what everybody else does. They're doing what has been taught to them for probably their whole life. And why? Because this is just the way things are. Because a lot of people in this society do not question authority or don't, do they even question things that are in place. And when you've got the highest church in the world, the Vatican, you know, performing Christmas um, ceremonies it confuses the masses of the world but that's the way that this devil wants it right because he doesn't care if you think that December 25th which happens to be in the dead of winter was the birthday of the was the true birthday of the Messiah he just wants you to celebrate it because ultimately when you when you trace back the December 25th uh, birthday it goes back to Nimrod of the Bible discussed in Genesis uh, chapter 10 who was the first Antichrist in the world after the flood he was a he was a man who became king over the nations about 200 years after the flood had happened and he had tried to create the Tower of Babel basically the, the New World Order back in that day but the Lord uh, destroyed his plans then and he's gonna do it again but in doing so uh, throughout all of history, the devils that run this world, they've continued the worshiping of him through pagan beliefs and rudiments of men, as the scriptures just said. Right? A lot of these people, though they believe they're simply just doing something nice, you know, getting gifts for loved ones, they're doing it in a paganistic, sinful way. There is a way for you to be a uh, an Israelite and celebrate a holiday, but not celebrate Christmas. Right? The Lord He gave us our own holidays, our own holy days, right? Not holy days. Right? When you go back to that word holly, it refers back to the holly tree, which used to be, uh, uh, which is basically the holly tree uh, in in which folklore goes back to the most magical tree and the reason is is because uh, uh, in Rome when you had the witches they, they all surrounded this temple of, uh, of, of Diana and this temple was surrounded with a lake and around the lake was nothing but holly trees and this place was considered extremely sacred extremely uh, spiritual extremely magical right and that's why they say holly trees are the most magical trees and hence this is why they make wands out of them and so forth right and this is why they use that in, in their magical terminology you got holly wood you know holly days and so on but as you can see in this image all these little symbolisms here they all go back to pagan beliefs the mistletoe 
pagan fertility ritual. It doesn't say it here, but ultimately this goes back to uh, the worshiping of testicles. The tree decorations, lights and baubles, are a Roman Saturnalia tradition, which the reason why they were here, they represented, again, more testicles. So like that, more fertility, right? Because Saturnalia, which we're going to read an uh, a, um, article about, it explains how this was an agricultural uh, festival, right? To, uh, to, uh, so that way the spring would have good fruits, gifts, Babylonian traditions, because again, these were gifts that you were to give to your king, which the tree itself was a representation of Nimrod, um, and which uh, I'll get into in a bit. Now, also the angel derives from Greek and Assyrian gods. Now, the Assyrian god that they're talking about is Samaramis, Nimrod's wife. Now, pagan, uh, uh, the tree is ultimately, again, pagan fertility symbol because that, this tree, it represented the, the, the uh, phallus of Nimrod, right? Because when you get into the history and the story of, of Nimrod is he died and he was cut up into uh, 13 pieces and every piece was found except for his, his phallus, right? And what they did, or what his wife did, Samaramis, she fashioned one out of out of gold and she put it back together and he and uh and then with that she was able to i, I believe impregnate herself or or there's also other stories where it says that that she had seen a tree that had his blood splat splatter on it it was a tree trunk and that tree had sprouted another tree and she said that was a symbol that that her husband nimrod was going to going to resurrect and that when he had died, he had ascended into the sun and became the sun. And that the sun rays had impregnated her through an immaculate conception, a virgin birth. This is where you get that false belief of a virgin birth, right? And also, when you look here, the Yule log, which Yule basically means kid in like a, I think in, in a European old language, but it's a symbolic of Mithras, god of the sun. Now. When Samaramis, when she got pregnant by by what she said was the, the rays of the sun, the son that she had, his name was Tammuz, or he would later be known as Mithras. Samaramis, who also through the Egyptians was known as Isis, she went on to say that myth that Tammuz, Mithras, was actually Nimrod in the reincarnation, that he had resurrected himself through birth. And he then had conquered conquered death and that he was now back to rule hence why they say the son and the father is the same and and ultimately so it's the father the son and the holy spirit and you see these churches they teach you a false trinity where they say the father being nimrod the son being a tammuz and the holy spirit being samaramis they say those three are the godhead and that's Paganism that is false paganism people and That belief there ultimately goes to Satanism which ultimately you know For the rest of the world it doesn't matter but for the Israelites the Negro Latinos native Indians and All those confusion of faith Israelites that are scattered around the world. You are not to believe this bullshit Because it, it is it is a false doctrine Right when because it all goes back and it can all be traced back to a man who ruled after the flood named Nimrod. I'm going to read this real quick. This is actually the scripture that the Lord warned us about not following these uh, these pagan rituals. This is Jeremiah 10 and 2. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathens are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, Vain. Let's, let's take a look at vain. What does vain mean? Let's see. What does vain mean? Having or showing an excessively high opinion of one's appearance, abilities, or worth, producing no results, useless. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, with the axe, they deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. 
that's the Christmas tree, people. That's right there is the Christmas tree, right? Because you see, this world right now is under a demonic spiritual power that's run by Satan, right? Satan currently rules this world, and he gets his he gets his dollies by having everybody worship him falsely, right? And ultimately, all this Santa, this this uh, Christmas. All this is the worshiping of Satan when you get down to the bottom of it, right? And this is why the Lord told us not to worship these, these devils. Don't, you know, follow not the ways of the heathen. And the heathen would be all the other 17 nations in this world that, uh, that inhabit this world with us, uh, Israelites. Now, that being said, this is what you should actually be celebrating. Hanukkah. You can see this is how it's spelled. It's Ka Na Ka, right? Ka Na Ka. It's the Hebrew word for dedication. That's what uh, Hanukkah means, dedication. Now, this is also known as the Feast of Dedication, right? Or the Festival of Lights. And it commemorates the victory in 164 BC that Yahweh gave to Judas Maccabeus and his brothers over the Greek Emperor and Antiochus. And the heathen Seleucid army, who then uh, rededicated the temple to Yahweh, right? Because you see, during this time of the Maccabees, and this is another way you could actually tell that the that the Apocrypha is a legit book. Because one thing I, you know, here the feast of the dedication that this story is told about, it's actually told in the, in the New Testament under John ten and twenty two. Yahweh Shai himself actually went, went to this. I'm going to start here at uh, uh, John 10 and 21. Others said, These are not the words of him that have a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. Right? It was winter. Notice that, people. And Yahweh Shai walked in the temple in, in Solomon's porch. See? So Yahweh Shai himself, he went to the Feast of the Dedication, right? Now the Feast of the Dedication, or Hanukkah, can only be read, only be read in the Book of the Maccabees. And that is found in the, the Apocrypha, right? So now why was the why was the Apocrypha taken out? It wasn't to hide Hanukkah, you know? But it was ultimately to hide what was in the uh, the Maccabees stories, the two books of the Maccabees, it talked about how in that time the nation of the kingdom of Judah, who was the last remaining three tribes, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Levi, and the tribe of Benjamin, who had been left in the land after the ten tribes, the northern kingdom, had been uh, kicked out uh, about 700 BC, about a uh, close to 400 years, you know, a little bit longer than 400 years uh, before these events happened. Well, you had the, the tribe of, uh, of Judah, Benjamin and Levi still in that land. And lo and behold, you had Alexander the Edomite uh, start conquering all the lands of, of the known world at that time. And he just so happened to come by the uh, Jerusalem. And there's even a story that either you could read about in Josephus and, and the antiquities of the Jews that shows that Alexander went to the uh, went to the temple, and when he seen the priests there, he actually bowed down to them. And even his generals were asking, "Why are you bowing down to, to these priests?" And Alexander said, "I seen them in a dream." And 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 the priest went on to tell Alexander that he was that he go uh, spoken about in Daniel, right? And and well, he then Alexander then went on conquering, and then later. The, the rulers and the nobles of the uh, of the Macedonians, the Edomites, who are then now calling themselves the Greeks, had come into Jerusalem to uh, to take their spoil to tax tax our people, right? And ultimately, the story goes on how they they taxed us an exorbitant amount. They were unfair to us. They treated us brutally. They made us stop use you know trying to. They made us stop following our customs. They they defiled the temple. They sacrificed pigs. And had harlots in it, right? And the pe and the and the rulers of our nation, 
Because at this time we had no kings, we had no no prophets amongst our people because the Lord had gone away from us for a while because of how he was punishing us. But at that time there was certain families that Israel would look to for leadership. And one of these families were the Hasmonean family, right? When you go back to the uh, Maccabeans uh, forefathers, one of the men name was uh, Hasmon, who later on would have um, the the descendants who would become the Maccabean brothers, right? And well, these Maccabean brothers they resisted the the Greek uh, um, invasion, not invasion, but uh, the taking over of our customs and making us, you know, uh, not uh, letting us follow the laws. Of, of, of our God and also they eventually would take back the temple and would rededicate it to, to, to the Lord right and this here in 2nd Maccabees 10 and 5 explain what the what the decree was that that uh, was given that that we should then um, um, observe these eight days it's, this is 2nd Maccabees 10 and 5 now upon the same day that the strangers profaned the temple on the very same day it was cleansed again even the five and twenty twentieth day of the same month which is Kislev. Kislev. so this is on the 25th right this is on the 25th day of Kislev. now i'm going to explain how we get to here but let's go ahead and finish the rest of this so let's continue at second maccabees 10 and 6 and they kept the eight days with gladness, as in the Feast of the Tabernacles, remembering that not long afar they had held the Feast of the Tabernacles, when as they wandered in the mountains and dens like beasts. Therefore they bare branches and fair bows and palms also, and sang psalms unto him that had given them good success in cleansing his place. They ordained also by a common statute and decree that every year those days should be kept of the whole nation of the Jews. You see that? So Hanukkah, people, Hanukkah, you Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians, should be what you are celebrating. It was decreed by our nation that this would be what we celebrate, man. Not these so-called Jews, these people who proclaim to be Jews, who they keep this all the day, but not us. Now, what do we, how do you find the 25th day of Kislev or Kislev, right? What the heck are these months? Well, you see, we have what's known as the Hebrew lunar calendar. Right now, the Gregorian calendar is a solar calendar. It, it is based off of the, the sun. From the beginning of time, recorded time, our beginning, and the beginning of, of, the, of the laws that the Lord gave us, time has always been recorded in the lunar calendar. As it tells you that the, that the sun and the moon is made for signs and for keeping of times, right? And this is how you have to, this is how you look to see when the new moons come. Now, the way that you do this is you have to go to the apostles of Great Millstone who would who are today the high priest on earth for the Hebrew Israelites for the nation of Israel these are literally the high priests these would be the rulers of all the Negroes Latinos and Native Indians now the majority of Negroes Latinos Native Indians don't know this and if they were to find this out they would probably laugh it off but this is the this is the truth it is the plain simple truth well these high priests these men of the Lord who the Lord has sent back they uh, they they keep the commandments along with one of the commandments they declare the new moon they do it every cycle if you want to do this you would go to the GMS info doc channel I believe it's 12 now but you can still go to 11 to get some of the old videos I myself have a playlist called GMS Sabbath that I've recorded all of the Sabbaths as far back and along with some lessons but um, when you go here right you got March which would be the new moon for the Passover this would be the our beginning month 
This is the first month, second month, third, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or so lucky. This is nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So, so the so the new moon, November twenty fifth, is the ninth month. That makes that month the month of Kislev, right? So it starts here, shows you here, Kislev number one, November 25th in the Gregorian calendar, right? Now this is the night of November 25th. This is the morning of November 26th. This is how this calendar is broken up into like this. So again, this would be the 26th night. This would be the 27th morning or beginning of it. See. Just like in the beginning of the Bible, in Genesis, where it said the night and the day were the first day, the night and the day were the second day, and so on and so on. Our calendar, the lunar calendar, always goes from night to day, from dark to light, because in the beginning was dark, and then light was created. Does that make sense, people? Hopefully, I'm not losing any of you. But as you go on, you count, right? Two, three, four, five, six, all the way down, to the 25th day of Kislev, which would be December 20th, and then you have eight days of Hanukkah, which is basically eight days of partying, festivities, gifts, being with your loved ones, having fr you know friends over, and so forth. This is what you should be celebrating, not some pagan uh, religion that is easily debunked, that ultimately you know makes you worship devils and demons, man, and gets makes you broke, right? So like today, today is the the uh, the third night, or it's gonna be the third night of um, of Hanukkah, right? In fact, after this lesson, I'm going to uh, to light up the, the 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 nine candle menorah. You know, like it tells you here, what you do is every day you use the center candle, which is supposed to represent Yahweh, and you use that candle to light one candle for every night the first night you light this candle the second night you light this one and this one the third night you light this these three and so forth and so forth until you're done at the eighth and when you're done with lighting the candles you put out the, the main one right that's because you know that that doesn't uh need to be lit also other things you use like i said use a nine candle menorah not the seven candle menorah which is the the standard menorah that we use for every sabbath one light Light one candle of the menorah each day until all lights are lit on the eighth day. Enjoy feast and mirth for the eighth days. And read first and second Maccabees over the eight day period. It's plain and simple. And these right here are the scriptures if you want to go through. I'm not going to go through them because this isn't a story about Hanukkah. This is ultimately a story about pagan, wicked Christmas, which we're about to get to right here. Let's go and read this. This is... Uh, Let's, see, let's read this here. Pagan truth. Christmas is Saturnalia. Saturnalia is a Roman pagan festival honoring the gods Saturn and Mithras. Right? And Saturn ultimately is Nimrod and Mithras is ultimately Tammuz. And is the source of Christmas. The celebration was a week-long festival from December 17th until the winter solstice on December 25th, which also was the birthday of Nimrod. Emperor Dom Domitian, who lived from 51 to 96 AD, changed Saturnalia's date, official date, to December 25th, which was also a Roman civil holiday for Sol Invictus, which means the unconquered sun, who would be Mithras or Tammuz. The tree is a Babylonian fertility symbol. It represents Nimrod's phallus. The angel atop represents his wife, Samaramis. And the presents below are placed to make you bow to the idol of Nimrod, right? Because remember, the tree is ultimately is, is an idol that stands in for Nimrod. Namely, it's for his penis, man. That's how disgusting and perverse these pagan ways are. The Christmas ham represents a pig that was publicly sacrificed. Hiding coins or other small objects in cakes is one of many rituals dating back to Saturnalia too. This was a method of choosing the next mock king. 
because you see this this cake here a, a lot of the uh the, the uh judites in the southern kingdom don't really do this but this is very big amongst the latin tribes the northern kingdom they call it bander the it's the bander de rasca or basically the king's bread and inside is a little baby and whoever gets it gets to hold the uh the, that same party after for the next year now like it says here in Saturnalia this is where the, the rich would pretend to be poor and the poor used to be pretend to be rich and they would elect one mock king every year to be the 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 host or the the, uh, the main guy who would go around causing mischief of misrule and being a, a fool being a mock king and this is how they would choose them they would choose them by by that cake so again all these traditions from the tree to the king's bread to the uh to you know the wreaths the mistletoe uh the, the gifts which are there to trick you to bow down you know this is why uh this is all done man it's all done in in mischief man it's all done to deceive you right and this is ultimately why you shouldn't be partaking in in christmas so let's go ahead and read about Christmas now let's let's read this this is did the Romans invent Christmas did the first Christian Romans Emperor uh, appropriate the pagan festival of Saturnalia to celebrate the birth of the Messiah let's find out it was a public holiday celebrated around December 25th in the in the family home a time for feasting goodwill generosity to the poor the exchange of gifts and the decoration of trees but it wasn't Christmas this was Saturnalia the pagan Roman winter solstice festival. But was Christmas, Western Christianity's most popular festival, derived from the pagan Saturnalia? The first century AD poet Gaius Virelius Catullius described Saturnalia as the best of times. Dress codes were relaxed, small gifts such as dolls, candles, and caged birds were exchanged. Saturnalia saw the invasion of social the inversion of social roles. The wealthy were expected to pay the month's rent for for those who couldn't afford it. You see that that's one that's one ritual these devils who run the society are never gonna friggin' do, you know. Masters and slaves to swap clothes, family households threw dice to determine who would become the temporary Saturnalian monarch, the poet Lucian of Somasada, who lived from eight one twenty to one eighty AD had the god Kronos, Saturn, say in his poem, Saturnalia, During my week the Sirius is barred, no business is allowed, drinking and being drunk, noise and games of dice, appointing of kings and feasting of slaves, singing naked, clapping, an, occasion, an, an occasional ducking of corked faces in icy water, such, as, such are the functions over which I preside. Right? So this is ultimately uh, was the credo of Saturnalia, man. Saturnalia originated as a farmer's festival to mark the end of autumn, right? Check that out, the end of autumn. Planting season in honor of Saturn, Satis means sowing. Numerous archaeological sites from the Roman coastal province of, um, of Constantine now in Algeria demonstrate that the cult of Saturn survived there until early 3rd century AD, so about 200 AD. Saturnalia grew in, dur in duration and moved to progressively later dates under the Roman period. During the reign of Emperor Augustus from 63 BC to 14 AD, it was a two-day affair starting uh, on December 17th. By the time Lucian described the festivities, it was, it was seven days day's event. Changes to the Roman calendar moved the climax of Saturnalia to December 25th, around the time of the date of the winter solstice, which apparently was the day uh, Nimrod was born. Now, uh, it says, from, an, from as early as 217 BC, there was public Saturnalia banquets. The Roman state canceled executions and refrained from declaring war during the festivals. Right? So you see... You see uh, all those pictures of the Nazis and the Allied powers shaking hands over Christmas and doing all that. That shit was agreed upon by, by the generals because they knew ultimately what Christmas went back to, man. P 
Pagans, Roman, pagan Romans authorities tried to curtail Saturnalia. Emperor Caligula, who lived from 1280 to 41 AD, sought to restrict it to five days with little success. Emperor Domitian may have changed Saturnalia's date to December 25th in an attempt to assert his authority. He curbed Saturnalia's subversive tendencies by marking it with public events under his control. The poet Statius, uh, in his poem, Selve, describes the lavish banquet and entertainments the mission presided over, including games which open with sweets, fruits, and nuts showered on the crowds and featuring flights of flamingos released over Rome, shows from shows with fighting dwarves and female gladiators were illuminated uh, for the first time into the night. The conversation of Emperor Const the conversion of Emperor Constantine to Christianity in 312 AD ended Roman persecution of Christians and began imperial patronage of the Christian churches. But Christianity did not become the Roman Emperor's official religion overnight. Dr. David Gwynn, lecturer in ancient and late antiqui antique history at Royal Holloway University of London, says that alongside Christians and other pagan festivals, the Saturnalia continued to be celebrated in the century afterwards. The poet Ambrosius Thaddeus Macrobius, Macrobius wrote another Saturnalia describing a banquet of pagan literacy literary uh, celebrities in Roman during the festivals. Um, classist dates the work to between 383 AD and 430 AD, right? So it describes a Saturnalia alive and well under Christian emperors. So you see that, people? So this is the time about uh, 100 years after Jake, the so-called Negroes, took over rulership of, of pagan Roman and, and turned it into a mon monotheistic uh, Catholic Rome, man. And they still were, were going off and doing idolatry. And that just shows you that they simply, that the churches established back then were also going off, man. They weren't following the, 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 the right way of celebrating the Bible, right? The Christian calendar of uh, Polymus Silvius, written around 449 AD, mentions Saturnalia, recording that it used to honor the god Saturn. This suggests it had by then become just another popular carnival. And that's exactly what it is. But you see, even though it's just another carnival, it still has spiritual connotations. It still provides worship to these idols, which means you're not worshiping the Lord. You're ultim and that ultimately is the breaking of the first commandment that says that you shall have no other gods than, than the Most High, Yahweh, right? Christmas apparently started like Saturnalia in Rome and spread to the Eastern Mediterranean. The earliest known reference to it uh, commemorating the birth of Christ on December 25th is in the Roman uh, Philocilian calendar of AD 354. Provincial schisms soon resulted in different Christian calendars. The Orthodox Church in the Eastern Byzantine half of the Roman Empire fixed the date of Christmas to January 6th, commemorating simultaneously Christ's birth, baptism, and first miracle. You see that? There's a bunch of folly. And I'm, I'm, you know what? Let me just finish reading the rest of this. Saturnalia has a rival contender as a forerunner of Christmas, the festivals of Di Natalis Solis Invictus. Now, birthday of the unconquered sun. Now, this is where it goes uh, to the worship of Tammuz, right? The son of Nimrod, who supposedly was Nimrod in the reincarnation. The Philo Philokalian calendar. Uh, also states that December 25th was a Roman civil holiday honoring the cult of Sol Invicta and its origin in Syria and the monotheistic cult of Mithras. Remember, Mithras was Tammuz. Sol Invicta certainly has similarities to the worship of Jesus because, again, Jesus is ultimately an amalgamation of all these pagan gods which ultimately make him that same god but just with a new face and a new name. But it's the same ceremonies because they're, it's the same idol just worshiped differently by different uh, civilizations again this is why you should not be following 
uh, this false idol Jesus or any of the so-called, uh, uh, you know, Christian holidays like Christmas, Easter, and so forth. The cult was introduced into the empire in 274 AD by Emperor Aurelian, who effectively made it a state religion, putting its emblem on Roman coins. Sol Invictus succeeded because of its ability to assimilate aspects of Jupiter and other deities into its figure of the Sun King, reflecting the absolute power of divine emperors. But despite efforts by later pagan emperors to control Saturnalia and absorb the festival into the official cult, the Sol Invicta ended up looking very much like the old Saturnalia. Constantine, the first Christian emperor, was brought up in the Sol Invicta cult in what was by then already a uh, predominantly monotheistic empire. It is therefore possible, says Dr. Gwen, that Christmas was intended to replace the festivals rather than Centinelia. So, and Gwen concludes, the majority of modern scholars would be reluctant to accept any close connections between Saturnalia and the emergence of the Christian Christmas. And that's a bunch of bullshit, man, because ultimately, Christmas is ultimately the copying of these pagan religions. Nothing to do with Hanukkah. Devout Christians will be reassured to learn that the date of Christmas may derive <laughs> from the, co check this shit out, man, from the concepts of in Judaism that link the time of the deaths of the prophets being linked to the conceptual conception or birth from this early eclas e ecclesiastical number of crunchers extrapolated that the nine months of Mary's pregnancies following the Annunciation on March 25th would produce a December 25th date for the birth of Christ. You see that shit, man? These devils, they literally will jump through mental pretzel knots to come up with December 25th being the day. And that's bullshit, man, because we're going to actually read a scripture that shows you that this didn't take place during the, uh, the winter period and that story could be found in uh, Luke because you see when the Lord was burnt born he um, there was there was a an angel appear or an angel appeared to shepherds that were working that were in the field now in the time of winter shepherds are not out in the field they are in the uh, they're in their their barns and in the mangers you know uh, taking care of animals and not putting them out into the field it's way too cold right but it tells you here it says Luke this is Luke uh, 2 and 8 and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field right they were working in the field keeping watch over their flock by night do you know how cold it would be in the in overnight in winter they, they were not out there and lo and the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is yeah, the, Mess the Messiah, the Lord. All right? So that just shows you, man, that this was not that that his birth was not uh, in the uh, was not in the winter, man. And what other times, man? What other times could would Joseph could could this be tied to? Right? We know that Joseph and Mary were in in the uh, town. Uh, they had been forced to go to that town of Bethlehem because of uh, there was a law, a tax law given by the Roman Empire, which surprisingly would you know they collected back in those days those ancient times they collected their taxes in in April right just like they do today because why because that's the beginning of the the true year right and that's why Joseph and Mary had gone uh, back to their town during the time of the tax collection which would mean that the Lord was born during the time of spring he was born around the time of the Passover people Let's go and read this. This is Exodus 32 and 3. And all the people 
brake off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamations and said, Tomorrow is the feast to Yahweh. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And, and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Now check this out. Go get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed unto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone that I that my wrath may wax hot against them, against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Now I read all that to, to show you what happened to these people when uh or what or what these people wanted to worship the Lord in their own way, right? Because today when I talk to people about this, and I bet you a lot of people are gonna watch this video, they're gonna say that they celebrate Christmas but they're still worshiping God, that they're doing it for the kids, that you know, that the Lord knows their heart, that He knows that they're worship that, that he they're worshiping him. No. It tells you right here, this is a an exact example of other people who thought they were also worshiping the Lord by doing it their own ways. Right? But but what did the Lord say? He wanted to consume them and destroy these people, man. But it was but it was only because of Moses that these people were spared. Now, let's go ahead and jump forward and let's find out what what the Lord did to these Israelites who are ultimately going off. This is going to be found in the 20th verse. There he goes. In 25. This is Exodus 32 and 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, now this doesn't mean literally naked. There may have been a few naked because they were ultimately worshiping these pagan religions which, you know, did call for that. But the naked here means that they had sinned they no longer were covered by the by the laws of the Lord so they were naked right they had sinned for Aaron had made them naked unto their their shame among their enemies right so you see that for Aaron had made them naked because he he created that calf and he permitted them to go off and then Moses stood in the gates in the gate of the camp and said who is on Yahweh's side let him come unto me and all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him and he said unto them thus says Yahweh God of Israel uh, put every man his sword by his side and go in and out from the gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Do you see that? So the Lord, he's not messing. He's not messing around, man. He's, he does not want you out here worshiping Christmas. He doesn't care if it's for your kids. He doesn't care if it's what you think you should be doing, right? That you, that you think the Lord's going to appreciate your, your collection of, of, of Santas going down the chimney. That you're exclusive uh, Christmas tree balls you know all that he doesn't care about that man he wants you to follow him this is Deuteronomy 12 and 29 then Yahweh, thy power shall cut off the nations from before thee 
whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeeded, uh, succeeded, succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by the by following them. After that they, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods. Saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. So you see, the Lord said not to be following these other nations' gods. Don't even even ask about how these other nations uh, worship their gods. Man. This is John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. And you see that? Lord prophesied that in the end times people would be worshipping him in truth and why is that because he has now brought the truth back into the world and he has given it to to uh, you know starting with Yahweh Shai who, who, who was able to open up that book he was able to then uh, you know because they because when you go to churches they say that the book of Revelation is sealed and ultimately that's now false because now the, the uh, Messiah has opened it and the apostles through their teachers they got in the, the proper understanding and that's what we have the understanding now so hopefully this video was edifying Akim hopefully I was able to explain to you and also to all you uh, people who are just barely starting to watch these videos if you if you're still celebrating Christmas don't do that man that that's the Lord doesn't want that you know if you want to celebrate something you have a way better uh, holiday to be celebrating the Christmas, it's Hanukkah, right? You celebrate it with eight days, right? And it starts on the 25th day of Kislev. And I've already showed you how to find that uh, the 25th day of Kislev. So just, you know, find the Apostles page, you know, mark those on your uh, calendars and, you know, and then, you know, enjoy the, the righteous holidays and forego the pagan holidays, man, which are ultimately are going to cast you in, in, with uh, tons of sin. And, and uh, defile you right? but all right so hopefully with that Akim you were edified I want to go ahead and give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Rukakradash double honors to my teachers the apostles and elders of great millstone peace and mercy to the elect Shalom